Hey, Kevin. Morning. I was going to say, hey, Arthur, but it's Tyler. No, it's, it's Tyler today, just borrowing that as account. Starting to feel like the daily calls are going to start not be required every day. Maybe require yeah, some be, sort. Maybe yeah, maybe every other poll. day. Yeah, mm -hmm. some sort of a poll going. Is there? Does everyone have any major updates? They need yeah. talking. Yes, they do. Yeah. No, they don't. Enough yeses, yeah. then we'll have yeah. otherwise. Yeah. Just update, update the form. Yeah. Move on with the rest of your day. But I think we should have more calls just to like check in with people. Mm -hmm. because, you know, human side of it more than anything. Yeah. How are you doing, Maya? You okay? I'm on mute. Very cute. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Doing good. Good, good. Right, so moment. just let me know when I should start speaking. I'll shout you, don't worry. I don't imagine there's going to be a lot of people, I mean, by measuring what it's like outside. I mean, today, it's really quite sunny over here. It's like sunbathing weather sunny. Cool. It's, yeah, so it's nice, but it's also like, I don't want to be inside in front of the computer. I'm going to go for a walk in the park, I think. Oh, trouble's here. Everyone shush. Shh. Everyone shush. <laughs> What's up, man? Oh my god, there's two Arthurs. <laughs> We've had three. <laughs> it happens sometimes. <laughs> I was just saying, Arthur, that now we've got like a poll system, maybe regards to like daily calls um putting up um a poll going do you have a major update that he's talking about and if enough people say yes we'll have a call but if enough people say no <laughs> update small if you know update a form yep. and we that's uh, a great idea i think that will be a way of like you know with enough notice uh, do we have to sit here and talk or not i mean don't get me wrong it's i think it's good to have calls just for like the social connection side of it. That's actually the but, thing that I think we should enforce because I'm actually feeling anxiety when I have nothing to share yet. And I'm like, uh, I should probably not join this call. And I feel that many people do just because, you know, we're, we're overwhelmed with many different things and like work and life and quarantine mm -hmm. and uh, all things life. And sometimes we just don't have anything to to share and yeah. it's overwhelming because when you join a call like this and you have this kind of reporting uh, scheme and whenever you get asked to report it's it's actually anxiety um, exercise right there yeah it's what yeah. don't get me wrong that's one of the things that i've thought is like the amount of people i mean maya don't care she turns up and goes like there's nothing to report it's fine but I not everyone's like that, the, <laughs> not everyone's the confident <laughs> Yeah. Not everyone's the confident communicator. Um, but I also do think that people don't turn up because they don't want to be like, get asked. And yeah. if nothing else, if we had a way of like, yes, you've got something significant to talk about or something that you've got some questions about because, you know, the options to, I've got things to disclose or I have some questions that I wouldn't mind talking to other people about it. You know, both of them things are reasons to have a call. But if it's just a case of like pure reporting, it's it's not it's not the most effective way of actually transferring information. Yeah. I mean, we have to improve on that for sure. And I think the daily progress sheet is amazing in terms of like the conciseness, but there is actually a missing element of like human in it, right? Yeah. And um yeah, I, I'm not sure how we solve for that, but maybe even including embedding a video on that, uh, you know, day of daily progress would at least make it more human because you would at least see some faces. 
Yeah, like I said, there's, I mean, for me, it's not a big deal. I live with people and there's people to talk to and I've got like social communication, but I don't know what everyone else's scenarios are. Some people are probably don't see many people at the moment or I don't know. Everyone's in this sort of weird scenario that some countries are starting to reduce lockdown. Some countries are re-engaging lockdown. I mean, I was reading an interesting piece of news earlier on that um, a Cambridge scholars basically said that for the next two years, we're probably going to have 80 day cycles of 50 days lockdown, 30 days less lockdown, and then back to 50 days strong lockdown. And I'm like, that's probably an interesting solution, but we're going to be living with this for a while if that's the case. Yeah. For sure. Anyways, let's uh, let's let's get the uh, the the run on the mill bit done. Has anyone got? Uh, anything to start the day with? Anything to declare? Anything interesting? Any any victories? I kind of have. That's the main reason why I joined the call. Um, Figured you did. Yeah. So, um, hey, Chris, what's up? Hey guys, good to see you again. I'm yeah, back. hi, Chris. Perfect. Yeah. See, see, people are are also casually coming back, and it's important to to kind of re-engage them too and in, in a non-overwhelming manner, not saying like, hey, Chris, we need the second episode of podcast, like tomorrow. <laughs> well, so, but it'd be nice to work on it. No, I'm super down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, happy to see you back. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so what I was going to say is that we've uh, finally established this kind of uh, common infrastructure for Core 19 um, in terms of uh, being able to query papers uh, and not deal with like giant data sets. Basically, we have a database that we can query now. And <coughs> we've uh, connected that uh, premature MVP of the tables thing. Um, hey, Tyler, can you let me a screen share? I didn't realize you couldn't. Because uh, I'm, I'm coming from my second <laughs> Zoom account. I have three now. OK. Can you see it now? Yep. OK. So uh, some people already seen this thing, and the others haven't. For those who haven't, this is the list of literature review, which are tables that scientists um, and researchers wrote manually based on the Core 19 materials. So as you can see, uh, if, if you open uh, the one, um, the question about adhesion to hydrophilic phobic surfaces, you can see the actual um, study, link to the study uh, journal. And when it comes to uh, the actual like time of persistence, uh, study population, sample, you can sort by this. Obviously there are some, some issues um, that we need to fix. And that's where the hypothesis tool comes in because it will allow uh, researchers to annotate and collaborate. But the idea behind it is creating this central infrastructure where people can, um, where medical professionals can go, first of all, see if there is something that they are interested in, like heart, like heart disease risk factors, open it and see if there is some, some relevant information, relevant data for them to, to figure out. I think we'll have some issues with having ones in numbers, but basically a place for people to come and explore which questions were already asked and which questions were already answered. And if not, simply put in the question, like what are the risks, um, risks of like COVID-19 for people with um, autism or things like that? And if there is no answer, you can simply ask that question. And ideally, AI um, kind of assembles a, a list of papers that talk about it, filters the initial pool of papers, and then pings researchers that have this as a direction of interest or direction that is relevant to them, and has them uh, fill out those literature review tables. Uh, or like the ultimate vision is AI will pre-populate some of the extracted data, like the incubation range or like sample uh, data, quantitative data, data mainly, and have researchers uh, improve it, fix it, and then have that medical professional, um, you know, a complete answer to this question based on 60,000 scientific papers in less than 24 hours. 
so that's that's basically the the product we're we're creating right now and we're at, at this very beginning stage of just ideating how it should look like i highly encourage anyone that has uh, experience with uh, user experience um kind of check it out and see um how we can improve this obviously we're juggling many things together and there are some technolo technological issues and just connecting um all of these pieces together but it's it's doable and it feels like we're probably uh, like two three weeks away from being able to expose this to external world and make it an actual useful thing that researchers and medical professionals will benefit from and the only thing that we need to make sure is that it's actually correct data and that's why the hypothesis tool and this kind of collaboration of AI and human in the loop curation will be very, very important. And obviously this haven't been done before. So I'm, I'm not sure if we'll be able to do this in two weeks, but we should strive for, for that. Um, when it comes to the hypothesis system, is hypothesis a little bit like how you can edit inside Wikipedia or a wiki? It's is it an ability like, to like, is it like an ability to update and edit the information with some management system that can say that actually this needs to be checked because somebody's changed something? Does it have that kind of facilities inside it? So here's a quick demo. Um, you can go to labs.coronali.org slash hypothesis.html. And for example, you think that uh, paper should be changed into, um, oh, I need to log in. Uh, if I only knew my my password and email. Anyways, um, maybe I can sign up. Actually, okay. <coughs> oh, of course, I need to activate. Well, that that's a good tutorial. Let me pause the sharing real quick. And basically, I have to verify my email. Yep, like you'd expect. Yep. <laughs> Hold on. I'm back. All right, it works. So you can install the Chrome extension to make it easier. But let me get uh, back to this. Uh, I guess it's here. So Hypothesis is somebody else's tool that we've... It's built. open source. Um, it's an open source tool. And we deployed it in our infrastructure. And I think we already tweaked it. I think Slava and uh, Maxim uh, did. I have no idea what happened there. But um, yeah. So it has like getting started guide to create annotation, select text, and then select annotate button, blah, blah, blah. So basically, if I think that this uh, should say not paper provided, but, um, or let's say not service um, is a platform and click post to public, this will be the annotation that everyone will be able to see. And then um, I'm not sure how the approval works, but it's already baked into the system. Not bad. So the approval, we don't know how the approval system works, but we're going to have to, that's going to be a, it's going to, it's still going to have to be crowdsourced knowledge. We don't want to have too many, yeah. too many gatekeepers, but there are still needs to be some supervision of like, any crowdsourced knowledge. Obviously. You imagine, um, obviously like the goal is to first enable the quality of information on these tables, the literature review tables. Like if there is a, um, wrong journal or something or wrong or, the, or even if you yeah, have a wrong journal or a wrong location or a wrong link or a yeah yeah that's a quick one but then if you imagine like we don't want to have people go to coronamad.org this is just an internal uh, tool first of all and we need permissions and things for that uh, for that matter but ideally we create something that can live on uh, PubMed right yeah now uh, on PubMed and be basically an extension or something. So for example, for this paper at the very top, you'll see all the literature reviews 
pertaining this uh, paper. And whenever you see something that doesn't make sense, you just highlight it uh, and you change it in that literature review table. Or if you see something in this uh, paper that is like highly relevant to that literature review. Is there, a, is there a highlighting process as well to like, oh, this is yeah. definitely worth making yeah. note of? Being able to just like drag and drop in the, that literature review and have that, uh, you know, immediately uh, get into the pool of things to review. This is powerful because at this point, I mean, there are probably like, I don't know, like 50 million people that use PubMed. Imagine all of them being able to interact with the literature review tool and being able to crowd, uh, crowdsource it. it. It's beautiful. Yeah, I think, well, like I say, it's taking Wikipedia's crowdsourcing of knowledge and focusing it at, not that Wikipedia doesn't have technical knowledge in it, but Wikipedia is obviously an encyclopedia of everything. This is scientific. A more f- this is more, f- yeah, direction. more focused scientific, scientific focus. And the, the angle of medical. questions is actually the best angle because that's how we as humans operate. Even when we use Google, we kind of like we hate using keywords because that's not how our brains work, and that's why. Um, Google start doing these like suggested questions. Um, you guys seen that, right? Whenever mm-hmm. they transform the keyword into like what or how and like, um, like for example, let me Google sport cars and there should be, yeah, people also ask what is best sports car for the money? And the reason why people like it is because that's how they actually think. That's a, it's an organic language usage rather than sports cars. It's like, yeah. <laughs> what, what specifically about sports cars, you know, just a usual one pictures of sports cars. It's like, you know, the, yeah, it's, it's, it's not it's, very a natural way cars, of communicating. Prices, um, I don't know, Serbia. That's how I, I would find um, uh, like a car rental in, in Serbia, right? Or uh, for sport cars. Or if I would uh, say like Elon Musk or something, I would find this. Uh, oh, I, I can't even find it, but there's this crazy guy um, that is like Elon Musk of, of Serbia. And um, what's it called? Car, Tesla, Serbia. See, like I can't even find it, but I would be able to say what is uh, like Elon Musk uh, Serbian car uh, startup or something. Yeah, and like it's not even relevant. Yeah. But I swear there is this guy that exists. Okay. And I'll I'll find the link. Yeah, it's been dreaming. Art has been having crazy dreams again. <laughs> anyway, let's that's all been really interesting. And oh, well, uh, we we'll definitely have to make you can have you're gonna have to write up everything you just talked about into the notes though, because I am not doing that. Yeah. Uh well hopefully we recorded it. So Yeah, we recorded it, but but reading things is more efficient than watching videos. Yeah. We need, we need to remember this fact. Yeah. You know, you can scan through a document and take a lot more information than the, from a 20 minute video that you could probably summarize in, in a minute. Oh, I have another big update. I just remembered it. Uh, I swear it wasn't a dream. Um, I actually um, need to schedule a call with Augily and uh, Audrey, who is an impact investor from Geneva. And I think we're capable of creating the actual curated uh, quality um, platform, like a place for people that are willing to invest money into the cause to go and see something that is viable, meaning curated has a chance to uh, make an impact to the world. And just having just like funding.coronawai.org as the ultimate place for aggregating all the uh, both funding opportunities and the <coughs> the project like you know the health uh, lens project that we have in our uh, slack or the life box the data owners project or discovery engine or literature review pro- project all of these things obviously someone has to curate that and make sure it's quality and it's viable and not of questionable utility uh, and I think that with Audrey's help and her partner, because they've been, they've been creating this um, kind of platform that they've tested in India for impact investing, uh, creating like the bottles for a water 
um, what's it called, like the, uh, like basically cleaning water for uh, places where there is no clean water. And they tested this platform, it's called Artha Capital, I think. And they, they want to take that platform and just give it to us to, to do the COVID-19 angle for it. So I think, uh, Ogilvy, you would be amazing in terms of helping bridge the connection between us and Audrey and external world in terms of partnerships, because you've been doing such a great job connecting with all of these external entities. I think that um, lawyer firm that you found, like Schecter or something, would be yeah, also yeah. very beneficial to that because they would help craft uh, you know, the messaging and everything around this because it's, it's hard. I've never done like impact uh, investing uh, and obviously like we, we have to f make sure it's like compliant. And we have to, we have to get it right. You can't really, yeah. Yeah. you can't really make that one up on, on the, on the, on the moment. You have to get it right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, to you ugly about the times. Yeah, yeah. Definitely let me know once you schedule the call. Um, I'll definitely want to be on that. Um, this is of course like new territory for me because I've also never done like impact investment, um, anything in that sector. But um, I emailed with the uh, PR firm this week. I'm waiting for a response. Um, <coughs> hopefully, I've also like connected with um, via my like point of contact with them um, via LinkedIn. Um, and she's like communicating with other people because they do have to, um, she said it may not be her um, personally who um, gets to work with us. So they're trying to figure out, because um, doing this pro bono means that they have to find time, like besides all the workload that they already have. Um, so they're, she's gonna try to figure it out with her colleagues and see like who the best person, maybe two people um to split time to help us out on this but once she um, gets back to me i'll definitely give an update but so far that's uh that's where we that's where we are but definitely agree um their their help will be great on on this perfect and see i found it it's called ray mac and it's some uh, crazy concept electric car that is a competitor to tesla and the guy is, is really crazy. And yeah, it, it exists. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't saying it wasn't existing. I was just enjoying oh, yeah. winding and, you and up. And then, and then he partnered, partnered with Porsche. So Porsche acquired like 10% of his firm. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So now Porsche's uh, electric vehicle program is powered by Remark. Mm. Yeah, because uh, Por like Porsche really stepped up their electric stuff, but it's probably related to the fact that this guy from Serbia is come up with yep. some really clever technology. Anyways, as much as this would be just a really enjoyable, tangential conversation, I feel like I have let yep. Arta take a little bit too much of this over. So I agree. I'll shut we up. will summarize, we will get through group, we will get through our, um, we will get through our tasks and summaries. So we will start with Maya because Maya's here and why not? <laughs> right. Team risk. Um, what do we got? Oh, we got uh, we got a predictive model uh, that uh, works on both ULMS and row sentences. Now it's our time to um, uh, try it on a new papers and see if we approve our results. Uh, together with engrams. We would like uh, to believe we will expect something like 60-70% uh, relevancy, which is much better than something like 40-50 <laughs> we had so far. We had in the yep. first submission. Um, and uh, basically our next step is to try the model on the new papers. Um, get abbreviations for the diseases and other relevant terms because abbreviations matter. Uh, we did solve the problem with a medical expert and Ruslan is checking uh, with having uh, the relevant terms. And uh, it's, good to, it's good to hear that we've got some medical people back because they're in the community, but I've just always assumed they're always really busy. <laughs> I had a really... Are. 
really nice call with Ruslan yesterday. Thanks God he is fine and uh and helps us and like really enthusiastic so we are good and uh the next uh, important uh, action item from your side guys for us will be annotator uh and i think that the first set of paper i will just uh, manually check myself because we are going to extract something like few tens papers and not more than that so that i can kind of read and make some conclusions but after the fine tuning we indeed will need kind of probably even a team of annotators well we did have a team of annotators whether they're still around because they worked on treatment um, annotations so there is a team of medical people around i think there are a lot of medical students under um who's covering but will that. they be will they be available that's the question. It's the, it's yeah, the right. question. It's like the, the it's, that <laughs> yes, that's, that's something we're going to have to work out. We're going to have to, I'm going to have to, um, I've also seen there's a LinkedIn community of uh, like 14,000 people. There's a LinkedIn group of epidemiologists and people interested in epidemiology and public health. And it might be something we could look at because we, even if we could get like 1% of them to turn up, that's like 140 people. So... <laughs> Um, I apologize. Simple weather. Um, so risk. Oops, I'll be filling in the wrong, yeah, wrong we, box. Yeah, we I'm pretty much done with reporting. And thank yep. you so much. New, so you need to test it on new papers. And version 20 is coming up, which has got new papers added to it, as far as we understand. Like there is a chunk of new papers being added into um, version 20. So yeah, it seems so. That, so that might be something you can test test your predictive stuff on after that comes into the pipeline. Um, okay. so probably, we probably will do it on any version that is available on the, at the moment, keeping in mind that uh, further versions uh, will be treated so that we can use our current code. And as far as I understand, Slava pretty much understands a, a, our, our needs and I pretty much kind of understand what Slava is going to provide us. So you were saying that you kind of anticipate about 70% accuracy? No, I'm kind of saying that uh, we, um, because, because new versions are not ready, it, it, it's a good possibility that we will run the test at the moment. On a, yeah, yeah I, I understand that. No, Order I'm just saying you were talking about predictive models. You were saying that you were in like 40, 50% accuracy on your predictive, predictive stuff and you were hoping to get it more closer to 70, 60, 70%, yeah? I'm just trying to make this notes. Is, this is what I'm uh, like, hoping. I want, I want uh, at, a sub at a submission, I want to be above 70%. Okay. That's what I'm looking into. That's great. Um, so we've got search engine, ontology, discovery engine, Lucas or any of or, or Arta, do you want to cover any of that? I think Lucas uh, posted a quick report on Slack. Uh, we're still working oh. on version 19 data frame that should be done probably this week. We all work also on sanity checks for future data sets, no substantial blockers. And okay. Discovery Engine, basically we uh, started to realize that we have to create this kind of Kind of the thing, and this is going to sound very ambitious, obviously, but we want to create what Mozilla created for the internet, which is a browser, kind of a, an open source way to discover knowledge and build uh, extensions on top of it, meaning all the projects, be it you know for uh, epidemiologists or for physicians, are are basically plug-in things, and essentially the the we are at this early formulation stage of how the discovery engine can be done in a mvp kind of like a minimum viable uh, product way to not overwhelm anyone with this ambitious uh, vision but still provide uh, utility okay you, again you're gonna need to write that up, up at some point okay because i can't write as fast as you can talk and you've got it all in your head already um, okay, so we've got Isaac from Patient T Patient Forecasting. I thought it didn't work. Okay. 
Yep, I'm here. Um, so yeah, we're just beginning to start ramping up experiments with the mobility data. Um, yeah, also we're trying to figure out better ways to test our model's predictions because there's so few time steps, there's a real question if we're just ridiculously overfitting our test set. So we're trying to devise better ways of testing our model's predictions with that. Um, so yeah, th those are the two main things. I also talked with Anton yesterday and we looked at laying out kind of the data uh, infrastructure and that piece. Um, so there has been some progress on that. Um, yeah, oh yeah, we also in integrated Travis CI into our repo. So we're now unit testing all of our code, which is good. Um, yeah, I guess that's the main updates from us. Okay. Um... Ali from Metadata Social Twitter thing. Hey there. Uh, How you so, doing? so, so uh, we are done with hydrating the all the tweets uh, up till the month of April. We are now working on the uh, May, on the month of May. On the month of May's day. Okay. Oh, any blockers, any problems? Uh, not, not, of, not as of now, then. Okay, that's fine. Um, Team Geo, Team Deus. Oh, I, I have an update about Team Geo. We, um, unfortunately, Daniel is overloaded with his uh, job and he's not able to contribute as much as he can uh, or he wants. And um, basically he asked us to prepare someone to help take over what they've built. Um, I'm, I will reach out to Manuel one more time and see how he's feeling because uh, he obviously built most of that um, code and infrastructure. So we need to prepare the passing of, of, of that to someone. Yeah, even if it's probably, just documentation so someone else can take over. It just yeah. needs to be understood. And probably that's going to be managed by Slava because that's more like geo data sets piece of uh -huh. it. So yeah, we'll have to figure that we need, out. We do need someone who's very familiar with um, Open data sources, open data extraction, and integrating open data systems into a into a central repository, or someone who's got the inclination to try and solve that because it's yeah. the trick it's is not a small it's, problem. <laughs> it's not a little it's, one. It's definitely a big thing. <coughs> yeah, it's actually time series data, which is harder because it's continuous and it's it's being like it, it updates. So it's much harder than uh, you know static. Data sets. Yeah, so rather than going, here's this lump of data, do what you want with it, it won't change. It's like, no, everything you do every day is going to get edited by the data set being moving as it's constantly updating. So, some, yeah, it, would, it needs someone who's either feels like they've got a lot of energy to put out that problem or yeah. already has a lot of experience. We're crazy. One now. or the other. It was crazy enough to try, but you know, fair play because we're all a little crazy over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, has anybody got anything from Ties? Anybody? I've not seen Christine in a bit. I really should reach out to her, but she's time zone is a bit harder to get to her. Um, I've seen some updates on their on their um, Slack. So I think uh, Dimitro is now trying to lead uh, Ties. So maybe reach out to him. Yeah, I've seen him updating stuff, and he's uh, he said that there's they've got a live collab system running now. Right. So they've done some modeling and we have a quick read. Uh, may, may I please ask something? Absolutely. Uh, just to have a general idea, do we have still, do we still, sorry, have <laughs> the same groups except that I've had a very great conversation with Lukas, so I understand where Search Engine is leading. But like as far as the rest of, the rest of the groups and updates, it's getting a little bit confusing. Yeah, um, ties are still working, but um, a guy called Dimitro's helping Christine coordinate and manage that a little bit more. So, like, they've got new version of ties knowledge graph is ready with vectorized words, cosine similarity, export to RDF files, and ontology modification. So they have they've built something. It's just 
it's harder to get updates more than anything. And the team is still fairly small, but they've been bringing more people in. Um, and, and as we've seen, Geo has, um, has been reduced productivity because Manuel and uh, Manuel and Daniel have both been busy or ill or both. So there's been little movement on that. And it's something that we do need to try and work out how to, because it is such an important integral part of things like patient forecasting and lots of other um, modeling systems that require extra time series data coming from, you know, geospatial related things. And we need someone to be funneling that data in to be able to, for everybody else's models to be more accurate, more effective. So it's something we do need to have. It's just solving our problems. Uh, uh, you know, it's just part of a problem we need to solve. So, and yeah, there's, there's like, there's now starting to be like sub team discussions with different elements, things like infra related to data sets, which data sets relates to search engines. We're starting to, we're starting to realize that it's much more meshed and you're seeing prime examples of it as well, Maya, because you're working with a few different leads to try and mesh it together. Yeah, and there's going to be convergence in terms of, like, for example, there is this group of Harvard Madison researchers that is working in our Slack with Jeremy and um, within the Task VT, and I still don't understand why why they're here and like how it's possible that we've attracted such people and they uh, gave the Indra tool uh, to be deployed on our infrastructure. And they keep on giving and they are engaging with us. And obviously we have something that is like interesting and like it, we're open enough and it, it's actually a productive environment. So that is exciting. But I think the key in the next two weeks will be converging to a cross collaboration of different teams and figuring out what those, you know, Harvard medicine guys are working on in task VT because I have no clue as most of you probably. Right. And yeah, Dan's not about, obviously, because otherwise he'd be here to, because um, we've not, there's no one from VT here, I don't think, to give us a full update. But VT is starting to be big, so big that there's like so much teams inside it. It's starting to look a little bit like that. But we knew that when Dan had originally came up with a concept that was like, you know, we're going to have probably six six tasks being done inside of, inside of, in that team doing subsections that all lead into a bigger problem that he's trying to solve for so he's made the whole floor chart and the whole system around that and that's a few weeks old and that's still work in progress you know everything's a moving target we've got to keep working on the fact that everything's moving constantly and every time someone tries to orient it it's already moved <laughs> so it's kind of the uh, nature of a system like right. this absolutely do we have any tracking of uh engagement, number of registrations, and cetera, uh, per periods. Actually, that's a, a good thing. Like most people felt like the Slack is dying out, but in reality, we plateaued, uh, meaning we, we actually had uh, like 500 active members at the peak, and now we have 300 active members, which is not that far, and it's actually constant which means majority of communications are actually happening in private channels and uh, DMs. And uh, this is just the nature of this kind of current period of uh, kind of production. And then I assume we're gonna converge to this public period that happened was the first round of Kaggle. Remember when all of a sudden everyone was everywhere in public channels and communicating uh, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, remember that, no. Uh... I just want to, uh, to kind of understand, right, what are fluctuations and let's say what can I uh, expect in N periods from now, for example, how will we increase our activities with the new, uh, which I believe we will get it back, right? The biggest problem the is that we start getting more quality people, like very, very high profile people less uh, kind of like random strangers, let's say that uh, like, uh, not, not in a bad way, but like just people that, hey, I can probably help with some, something, but more structured people like, hey, I'm an immunologist, I can help yeah. with this biomedical stuff. And then Jeremy can pick him up and- Yeah, we start, we're starting to have people who are turning up with like, I have this very specific skill and it seems like you need some help with that very specific problem. And we can utilize that more than a hell of a lot of people turning up going, I've got general skills. 
and it's yeah, yeah so it's but we do need to it is something that hr is trying to work the hr team and the communications team are trying to work on and it's something that i am trying to find um programs and systems and organizational processes to try and implement a way that we can have a better idea how active people are. I mean, I'm start. I'm probably going to start doing some polls and stuff, saying, you know, are you, you know, are you active? If you're active, are you involved? If you're involved, you know, how involved are you? So we need to. There's lots of these sort of things, um, these sort of questions that I've had for a while, and I'm just trying to formulate how I can ask them questions in a productive way, and also not completely rely on Slack as the medium to do it. Yeah, but I've been trying. I've been finding Slack. Um, people who've been like active but not talking and I know there's and I'm starting mm-hmm. to reach out to them people as well because if someone's active on Slack twenty six days out of thirty but they've never put a word not never put a message in there, I'm like, is that because you you've joined and then you've never come back and read or you are reading and you don't know where to start? Or like there's lots of questions which kind of goes into user research. Any system things. that we will invent in terms of tracking activity is going to be biased by, you know, different environments because obviously there are some people that are still working and helping us that are not part of Slack and they have calls like for example, Rockefeller university researchers or other groups that are external to us. But in terms of uh, activity, like it's it's very fascinating that a month ago, past the round uh, one, uh, we had 367 um, by the Slack uh, means of active, and now we have just 100 less, which is like constant. Like yeah, of course it's dropping a little bit, but that's also um, you know realistic because things are are changing. There is more uncertainty. But people are re-engaging. They're coming back, and I feel there's going to be uptick once we have more clear structure and convergence to more public communication. Because even in, in terms of public or private, you can see uh, this is perfect. Uh, see, months ago there was forty-three uh, percent in uh, direct messages. Now it's sixty-six, and the rest is um, mixed between public and private. So we're just not seeing that communication, but it's it's one of the reasons why I make an active effort to be in a lot of channels because I want to try and catch as much that is in the public space as I can. But it is one of those, I understand that private channels exist for reasons and I'm, I'm added into some of them and some of them not. And I understand like, I get the impression that I'm not in one sometimes because you see discussions that reference things and you're like, I don't even know that existed. And then Arthur will go, oh yeah, I'll I'll add you into it. I'm like, I didn't even know it was a thing because we're all in that scenario where it's, it's not like you can go, go walk up to a filing cabinet and see how full it is. It's like, it's, we're we're all in different buildings. So we can't see what everyone else can see. The same old problem of discovering things that you don't know exist. And this, this becomes a thing that, theme of our uh, community like that's the problem to solve for humanity in in a big way because yeah like the in the last 30 days we generated 50,000 messages and i don't think everyone realizes that that's a lot of messages there's a decent right. amount of communication still happening <laughs> right so I see we are we are good. I was I was worried for nothing. And um, well, there's still plenty of people around talking, and even like I say, there's a lot of it's just hidden from view, and we are starting to get like interested parties or interested groups, like it's like like has been mentioned, you know, people coming in from Harvard who are coming in as a group to intend to support an infrastructure that we're starting to use or you know we've got this interest from this ai group from the eu called claire and they've only brought there's only one person who's turned up from them but theoretically he represents three to four hundred ai researchers from from europe and it how integrated we become with that community is a question that we're still not you know fully investigated but it's things like that like they're and, and they've got some major problems with like they've got 400 people who are working on research but they don't ha- they don't have the infrastructure or the organizational system to work out how to utilize each other and they're all just using emails and and i'm i'd be perfectly fine hosting them because then we can get, get more cross-pollination more skills more people who are going to be discussing because it sounds like some of the things they're trying to solve for we're solving for too so it's a case of why duplicate the work when we could do it together and right 
put, right. put two labels on it. I don't care about branding, but Corona Y and Claire did this. That's there you go, done. That's the ego's <laughs> done. That's the ego problem done and dealt with. We don't have to worry about who's who's claiming ownership. Now let's solve the problems that are matter because that's what we're actually all here for, is solving real problems in the real time. Agreed, agreed. Right. Anyways, I think yeah. Um, this is really interesting. It's nice to have a bit of a chat on here because sometimes they're very like mundane. Um, has anybody else got anything to say, join, question? Does anybody feel like saying anything? Especially this is for like people who talk less. So Kevin, Sarah, Chris, Ayanson. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Ayanson? Yason. Yason. <laughs> it's Yason. There's, uh, uh, you know, sorry. Uh, it's Greek for Jason, so you can use Jason if you prefer. I, I yeah, I kind of figured it. Well, I know it's Greek, and I, it doesn't surprise me. This Jason. <laughs> yeah. um, but I'd love to hear from people who don't talk as much because Arthur and I are talkative and don't show up sometimes. So we need to make sure people who don't talk as much get a chance. Sarah, anything to say? I'm not putting you on the moment, but. No. No, that's fine. Then. No pressure. No. Um, cool. I just thought we, it's important to leave people time to talk and. Okay. All right. And we're I, think good, we'll, I think we'll just wrap this up. We've gone 45 minutes, which is a bit longer than normal, but it's nice that we've, you know, we've had a nice big organizational update from Arta, who needs to then go do some homework and actually write it down, please. Um, and I'm going to probably see about implementing the idea that we will have a stand up if there's enough to talk about. And that way people can join like text discussions, if there's an interesting text discussion, or we can take it to a, 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 a video call if there's something that really needs to be discussed in this sort of environment. Because it is an interesting way of discussing, getting people's points of view, but it's not a perfect way of knowledge transfer. And we need to try and work on increasing knowledge store, knowledge transfer, and efficiency, because we're all time limited as it is. So anyway, thank you very much for your time, guys. Um, have a lovely rest of your day. I'm going to go and enjoy some sunshine, because... It's really sunny here for the ones. All right. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.